I'm just gonna play some of this back and run through like kind of my view of what I've got here. So fat and pillowy. It ended up getting bright, a lot brighter from there, I think, with guitars and stuff on it. But I, I really like this. Sounds good without anything on its own. So that's pretty much uh, no effects on that. Let's see what the, the um, Sans Amp sounds like on its own. I'm just gonna, what, what I like to do is I just like to rifle through things to see how it would mix and match. So I, what kind of colors I can get just by using one mic or two mics or five mics. I just wanna see quickly that I'm in a, a, a versatile place. I'm still getting that sound. Cool. That's actually sending the bone to the left, the compressed overheads to the right, bringing in a little bit of sans amp and a little bit of the um, flat or unprocessed bass drum. I like that. That's sort of my favorite sound right now. Just the overheads. Bass drum, bone, and flat overheads. By flat, I mean no compression. I, I do have the little EQ, so it's not really flat. I like that sound too. I like that one.
So um, I've got a palette here of sounds that could get me to a lot of places very quickly um, without changing too much, I think. I probably need to go brighter on some things, uh, maybe duller on others. But, you know, if the band came in and said, we don't have time for anything, record. Without listening even to it fitting with the bass or drums, bass, guitars, or whatever it is, I'm reasonably sure that in 99% of the cases, I can make this work. And that's my goal when I do my initial setup. It's just to be ready. I can hit record. I just had to know that I'm recording drums with a band. That's, I mean, within, you know, within certain parameters, I know a little bit. But if I don't know the songs, I'm not sure what the producer wants to do. Um, that doesn't happen that often. You usually know a little something, right? But I'm just saying, for a special case, you could be ready. Um, anyway, I'd feel ready to do just about anything with this. It's been pointed out that if you didn't have certain bits of equipment like we have here, what would you use? And that's, uh, that's really valid. I like these things. Uh, um, I mean, I would rather have my level lock, but that's pretty good. It's, it's doing something different, but it's still a, in the ballpark, the level or. Um, the Spectrasonics, I've used 1176s in that role, and I've, um, I've used the Distressors in that role. In, if, with plugins, um, Eventide have a compressor that sounds great, called the uh, Omnipressor. Um, or if you found a real one, I don't, you know, I still don't think those are expensive. You, you know, an Omnipressor, maybe, but um, they're great. I used to have a couple of those. You know, anything that you can overdrive, there's probably compressors out there that I've never heard of that you could use. And then you could probably use a, a stomp pedal, guitar pedal, um, and try that out. What I like about the Spectrosonic specifically is, you know, how radical they are to begin with. And when I, when I got my first two, um, I, I found one in a, in a studio on what was to be a pile of rubbish. Um, it was just a, ma a mountain of cables, and there was this compressor. And I looked at it and said, oh, that looks, I don't know, I like compressors. And I grabbed it, I asked the studio owner if I could try it. I said, yeah, it's, you know, it's going to be thrown away. And um, I took it in the studio, I plugged it in, and... I actually didn't touch it. I, I plugged it in on a drum machine track, and it was a song called, it was a cover song, Sam Phillips, uh, not the 50 Sam Phillips, T Bone's wife at the time, Sam Phillips uh, on a record, I don't remember what album, it might have been uh, Martinis and Bikinis, and it was a cover song of John Lennon, Give Me Some Truth. And it was a drum machine part. And I sent just the drum machine through the Spectrosonics, brought it up, and the sound that you hear on the record is the sound that came out. I didn't touch it. And just was like, ah, ah, that's okay. And I went right to the studio owner and said, can I take this with me? And he said, give me $75, which I gave him. I went and got $75 that day out of my bank and gave it to him. And then I found another one the next day in a guitar shop for $100. So, and those two were very mismatched. You cannot get them to sound the same. Frequency response, attack release times, it's radical. And I love them like that. I've been offered to have them fixed, and no way. I just love them. 